Hello everyone, this is Shook and I'm here to talk to you about Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is an MMORPG developed by ArenaNet and released in 2012. The objective of this video is to get new players interested in this amazing game and to get old players to come back to the game. In this first part, I'll explain the strong selling points Guild Wars 2 had at launch and why I started playing it. The fact that there is no subscription fee is for me the strongest argument of this game. The game is also free to play now, so you just have to create an account and you can play for it as long as you want at the pace of your convenience. You don't have this feeling I know I had, where you have to pay every month to play the game and you feel like you have to play because if you don't, or not enough, you're just spending your money for nothing. The free to play accounts have access to the base game and have a few limitations, mainly targeted towards gold sellers and bots. Expansion packs are only 30 euros a piece. Another enjoyable thing is the effort that the art team has put in the game. Guild Wars 2 has some of the best environments and atmosphere I've seen in any video game. So, if you enjoy exploring and taking the time to discover the worlds you play in, you are definitely going to enjoy Guild Wars 2. Plus, Guild Wars 2 actually rewards you for exploring. In an MMORPG, you are going to spend a lot of time fighting either creatures or other players. Guild Wars 2 combat system is the best I've experienced in an MMO. This is mostly due to the dodging mechanic and the fact that you can cast spells while moving. This makes the combat system feel really dynamic and fast paced. A lot of players have bought the game in 2012 and left after a few weeks or months. In this part, I'll address the main complaints of these players and what has been implemented in the game to answer them. One of the main complaints I've heard is that there is no in-game content. This was kind of true at lunch, where the dungeons were the only PvE in-game content. PvP offered only cosmetic rewards that were usable only in PvP, but World v Worlds was pretty fun. World v Worlds is a big scale PvP mode, where players from three different servers battle each other in big maps over forts, towers and supply camps. A few months after launch, we introduced the Fractals of the Mist, which are a series of mini dungeons with growing difficulty. The fractal content has been developed and reworked several times and is now quality end game content which offers challenge in high level fractals and rewards. The other big end game content came much later with the expansion Heart of Thorns. We are here talking about raids. Raids in Guild Wars 2 are 10 player instances which offer challenging bosses and mechanics. The X-Pack Heart of Thorns has brought 4 new maps designed around a huge meta event that leads to some cool encounters in which all the players in the map can participate in. And as for PvP, it now has daily and monthly automated tournaments in the addition of regular ranked seasons. The functions the profession offered seem to displease certain players. I'm talking here about the fact that you don't have specific professions for healing, damage and tanking. Every profession can be some kind of jack of all trades with damage, healing and support skills in the same build. Personally, this was never a problem to me. It was Guild Wars 2's goal to break some of the MMO codes and they've succeeded by breaking the heal tank DPS trio that you see in every other game. Though with the implementation of raids in Heart of Thorns, ArenaNet has created room for tanking and support. Supports are rather handy in high level fractals too. Some player left after periods of several months without or with little content delivered. There were some gaps between Living Story Season 2 and Heart of Thorns, then between Heart of Thorns and Living Story Season 3. Nowadays, ArenaNet has developed a good and stable cadence in its story releases. Season 3 episodes were delivered within 2 to 3 months from each other. Each one of these patches brought new stories and a new map. The next X pack. Path of Fire will go live 2 months after the last Season 3 episode, will go live September 22. And the Season 4 of The Living Story will follow 3 to 4 months after Path of Fire. I have a note for the old players who left the game. Please note that all the Guild Wars 2 and Heart of Thorns things I've talked about have been heavily patched and modified since you last tried them. And if you try it again, your experience will be much more enjoyable. Than it was before. Path of Fire is the next Guild Wars 2 X-Pack. 
It will take place in the Crystal Desert, the region where Gear Wars 1 Nightfall took place. This expansion looks very promising, from what ArenaNet has showed us and what they've let us play. The first thing that struck me was the environments. They are simply gorgeous. The desert and oasis we've explored in the demos felt really nice and just wandering around visiting was a pleasure, especially by night time. The skybox is just beautiful. ArenaNet has announced 5 new maps, each one bigger than anything we've seen before and I'm personally very eager to explore them. Mounts are introduced with Path of Fire. It might be a little late for a 5 year old game you'll say, but in Gear Wars 2 we didn't need mounts. We have movement speed bonuses and plenty of waypoints which can teleport us everywhere on the map. As gliding is a movement feature of Heart of Thorns on which ArenaNet has expanded gameplay and mechanics, mounts are a feature of Path of Fire for which they have developed mechanics and gameplay. They aren't just movement speed bonuses with a skin, even though their model and animations look awesome. Each one of them have a special ability that will help you through the Elonian regions. The devs will implement them not only in the new maps, but in all the other old maps too. Finally, 9 new elite specialization will be obtainable for the 9 existing profession, for now a total of 2 elite specs per profession. The elite specialization brought by the x -packs offer a whole new dimension to the profession and new ways to play it, making it feel like a brand new profession. To me, Gear Wars 2 is in the best position or state it's been since launch. New content is released often, I'm talking here about the new story patches, new maps, PvP patches, balance patches, etc. The Living Story Season 3 is the best story content they've delivered so far, there is quality endgame content through raids, fractal and challenge modes, and the build variety is in a good spot. I feel genuinely confident in the upcoming x pack and the future of Guild Wars 2 in general. This is like the first video I've ever made, so if you made it this far, I'd really like to thank you for watching. Don't hesitate to comment in the section below, get some discussion going, and I hope to see you in game.